Hello and welcome to episode two of my Red Sea Reefer S850 build. The tank is now in the house and ready to be filled with water, but before I fill it up, I wanna take the opportunity to show you around some of the features of the tank, given that the S series is Red Sea's premium top of the line end of tanks. Now after my first video, lots of people asked me to film the process of getting the tank into the house, and I did actually set up a camera in order to do so, but it failed and didn't get any footage, so instead I'll have to describe how it went. I started by making a timber frame the same size as the the tank so I could do a practice run to see how the tank would fit through various doorways and corners. Now that proved to be super useful as it made me realise that the tank would go through the front door if I took it off its hinges, which meant I didn't have to remove my living room window, much to the delight of Mrs Reefstall. I also paid an aquarium moving company called Brighton Aquatic Services and they were absolutely fantastic. They had a variety of dollies that meant we could put the tank down at any point and there were six of us, including my fellow YouTuber Prestige Reef, which made the lifting really easy. With the tank in place then I can now show you some of the key features of this system. Starting with the glass tank itself and it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's six feet long, 27 inches front to back and 26 inches tall and I'm really pleased with the dimensions now it's in place. I was originally looking at a much shallower tank and I did wonder if this might be too tall for my liking but the dimensions really suit it and all look proportionate to the overall size. The tank has a single layer glass bracing along all four sides at the bottom and a double layer top bracing across the front and sides. Now they are there to add strength to the tank of course but I also like that the top bracing will stop water splashing out over the top of the tank and will give me a small shelf to rest things on like corals when I'm adding new livestock. Ideally I personally would have liked the bracing to be wider and to go all the way around the back of the tank as well. When fish jump out of aquariums it is almost always along the sides or the ends so a complete brace, certainly one slightly thicker, might have allowed me to get away without putting a cover on top of this tank. But to be fair a wider brace would have made both access and filming more awkward and while I will be hanging my lights I think most people will want to mount their lights on the back glass and I suspect that's the main reason Red Sea chose the top bracing to only cover three sides. The silicon in the tank has armoured seams on all corners which means I don't have to worry about damaging the silicon with my algae scraper and the silicon work generally is extremely tidy all the way around the display tank and it looks like Red Sea get their master silicon smiths to work on the main tanks. However, it also looks like they get the work experience boy to do the inside of the sumps because the silicon there is much less neat. Although to be fair, that's only the case on the inside of the sump where you can't see it and the silicon work on the outside of the sump is perfect so I'll let them off. Staying with the sump and I'm really impressed with the layout and plumbing. In the pictures online the sump looked relatively small for a six foot tank but now it's in place I actually think it's a reasonable size and there's plenty of room for a filter roller, skimmer, phosphate reactor and return pump in the main sump section. But there is of course also the sump extension which sits the other side of the central panel. It's connected to the main sump by a couple of ultra thick PVC pipes and I'll be using this as a frag tank but you can also use it as a large refugium or for storing various other filters or reactors. In terms of how the water flows around the sump it enters at the front left corner and goes straight into the filter sock section which I've removed as I'll be using a reef mat. From there it then goes into the first filtration section. As standard there is a central baffle with block off plates which means the water will then flow into the sump extension before looping round back to the main sump at which point it enters the skimmer section before flowing over the bubble trap and into to the return pump section. But if you don't want all the water to go to the sump extension, you can swap out the stock block off plates in the central baffle of the main sump for weir combs, at which point most of the water will then flow into the skimmer section before ending up in the return pump section. And perhaps more likely, if you prefer, you can block off the sump extension holes and remove the sump extension altogether. That would mean you have a much smaller sump of course, but you would gain a huge space in the dry section, and I have to say that's really appealing to me personally given how much kit I end up putting in my dry cabinet. Now while that's a clever design it is a bit of a shame that the sump is split into two sections because you lose out on about nine centimeters of space between the two sumps and I think Red Sea probably made that trade-off so they could add a full width support panel in the middle of the cabinet for extra strength and ultimately this setup does give you the flexibility to do what you want with the dry section so there are pros and cons. 
Onto the plumbing then, and the first thing to notice is that it looks absolutely awesome. I love the red pipes and they match all the Red Sea equipment, so you could totally pimp your sump up if you're into that sort of thing. Although I've undone part of that by using an orange return pump, which clashes something fierce with the color scheme. The actual layout of the pipes has also been really well thought through, and I love that the overflow pipes are right at the front of the sump. The main downflow valve on most tanks is buried at the back of the sump, but the Red Sea diaphragm is much, much easier to access, which means I won't bash my head on the roof of the cabinet while trying to adjust the valve. The diaphragm also appears to be an improved design over the previous Red Sea valve. The diaphragm on my Gen 1 tank was adjustable in steps, which meant you couldn't make the fine adjustments that you need to in order to correctly set the water level in your weir box, whereas the new diaphragm is completely smooth, so hopefully it will now be possible to make those fine adjustments, although I will of course report back in due course. The tank is also plumbed to allow twin outlets for the return pump, which means the water from the return pump will be distributed more easily evenly into the main tank and will disturb your sand bed less than a single outlet. Now I'll be using a single return pump and the tank comes with a splitter to divide flow evenly between both outlets, but it also comes with the option of two separate intakes if you want to run two return pumps for redundancy. And the last thing to say about the sump is that installing a reef mat is super easy as it just slides into the filter sock section and connects directly to the downpipe. And that's really worth a mention because installing a filter roller can be a bit of a faff, so I appreciate the simplicity of the install on this tank. Moving on to the cabinet, and there are a few nice design touches to tell you about. My previous Red Sea tank had tiny feet that only ran around the perimeter of the cabinet, but the S850 feet are three times the size and run through the middle of the cabinet as well as around the perimeter, which should help spread the weight a little. Now I thought the process of leveling the feet would be a complete pain in the butt, so I actually put it off for a couple of days, but when I got down to it, it was actually pretty easy. And the only thing I'll say is that I'd recommend you use a proper 14mm spanner, because the free one provided with the tank is tiny, which makes it irritating to use. The cabinet itself has three supports at the front, a double width plywood panel in the centre, plus two aluminium struts in the middle of each of the twin doors, and on the subject of the doors, they were really easy to straighten, thanks Thanks to an update in the Red Sea instructions. They show you clearly which screw to turn in order to line each door up, whereas the instructions on my previous Red Sea tank didn't have that, so I was left with guesswork. This tank also comes with a slide out panel that you can also buy for all other tanks and on first impressions, I think it's pretty good. I plan to fix my various control boxes to this, but I'll work that out properly later and ultimately it gives me more options and is a clever use of space. However, there are a couple of things I don't like about the cabinet. There's the lack of ventilation I mentioned in the previous video, which hopefully I've rectified by installing these PC fans. And because the cabinet is plastic, not wood, it won't be as easy to mount things like power bricks to the back of the dry section. And finally, I would have liked to see some inbuilt cabinet management to channel the various power cables from the sump to your dry section. I've bought this cable trunking management kit that will hopefully keep things nice and tidy, but it would have been great to see Red Sea include something as standard, given this is their premium range of tanks. So that's my overview of the tank then. In the next video, I'll be talking you through all of the equipment I'm using, spoiler alert, it's not all Red Sea stuff, and I'll be filling the tank to do a leak check and test I've got all the plumbing connected. If you want more updates in the meantime, you can follow me on the Reef Talk Facebook page where I post quite regularly, or you can join me and Presti Reef on the Sunday night live stream where we talk about all sorts of fishy nonsense. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for next time. And until then, happy reefing.